I'm Richard. I'm Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi. Uh, have you been on the boat for a while? Uh, well, I just arrived today, and that's but my that's my second year. I was here last year too. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, uh, what's your favorite part of it? Uh, Do you like the high ropes? That's what I want to ask. Yeah, I like the the top. Oh yeah. Yes, the third uh, yard sitting there. Oh my God. It took me a while to go over there. Especially when we're sailing and the boat's moving, because I, I'm short, so it's really hard to climb. Oh yeah, and it's really hard to go from a ladder to but another ladder. But the other ladder. thing is, uh, you know, okay, it rocks a little bit on the deck, but yes. way up top there, whoa, whoa, yes, it must go way far. Now right? it's nothing because we're anchored, but when we are actually sailing, yeah. that's that's something different. So, uh, show me around then. All right. Okay. Uh, I have to remember the whole thing. Oh yeah, whatever you remember, that's good. Okay, so we are on deck here, yeah. and that's the galley top. Where this is the galley here. Yeah. In there, we'll go in there later if we, want, we get hungry, right? Yes. And then I see anchors. That's the wind lash. Oh yeah. Has to lift the anchor. So we've got two anchor. Technically, we only put one down. An hour for six person of rolling that. So it's really, really. Hard. Really hard work, huh? Oh yes. One hour for six people. Yes. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. And we just held them late and change, and that's. Oh yeah. Really good at the, gym, the, gym boom. the jibs, all the yes. jibs. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, looks like there's a net there. If you fall in, you're not going to go all the way down, right? Yeah, and it's the best place to have a nap. Huh? It's a really good place to have a nap on the net there. Oh yeah, just you have a nap, down right? There, huh? yeah, the sun, <laughs> the wave, dolphin sometimes. Oh my, and there's 16 on board, right? Uh, yeah, I just arrived, so I think we are 15 or 16. Yeah. I'm not sure. So then, uh, how many are on watch and how many are off? Uh, there's three team watch, and uh, it's four hour on watch, eight hour off. Oh yeah, okay, so it's uh, like... Uh, one watch during the day, there's five seven. people on watch or something like that, right? Uh, four. Like, four. Uh, you have to know which goes where, right? All these rope? Every single rope has a job. Yeah. And every single rope has a plane. Oh boy. So you don't mix them. And the different... Okay, it takes six people to pull the anchor, but how many people does it take to pull one of these ropes? If you're pulling a sail and the sail's full of wind, it's no piece of cake, uh, well, right? Well, yes, it depends. It can be one, two person by rope. So when we lift the sail, like we have, there's people on the yard there, and have to tight and lift all the sail up and attach it to make sure. So like, I mean, it's a team, like someone's yep. on the yard and then somebody's yes. on the ropes. And here, someone's right? giving the order. What's this thing here? Is this another kind of a life? Uh, yeah, that's a life uh, raft. A raft, huh? So you hope you're not really going to have to huh? use it. Oh yeah. yeah, last resort, right? And that's a new one, we bought it last year. Uh, well, down there, that's uh, the foxhole. That's oh, yeah? where all the chemical produce are, and all the paint uh, and everything. So uh, everything needs to like... be sealed there. Yeah. So if there's any uh, risk of fire, everything is contained there. Oh yeah, that's, those are combustibles down there, right? Yeah. Okay, you got one head, right? Yes, for everyone. Oh boy. And that's pretty basic. Pretty busy place, right? <laughs> you take the bucket here, fill yeah. it with water. Oh, you, oh yeah, you just, uh, it's, a, it's and, a bucket flush, huh? Yes. Oh yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> and <laughs> that's good. when it's really cold at the beginning when it, we are in the Tasman Sea, that's also yeah. the place where you go for a shower. Okay. Oh, so yeah. we can go this way here. Okay, let's see if we can make it down. Yeah, all the map, the compass, the radio, computer, oh, yeah. books. Chart. It's the chart room yeah. and stuff, right? The chart, yeah. Everything. And that's okay. the cabin of uh, Evan. Yeah, Owen oh, Evan's cabin's in there. Yes, right, right there. Uh, hi, everybody. We're down in the navigation room of, uh, of a schooner, and uh, we're talking with Evan Logan. And uh, so thanks for welcoming us aboard, Captain. You're welcome. Carry on. <laughs> so uh, it's an amazing uh, lifestyle that you've built for yourself. I mean, you, you've had a dream. You you learned you were a seaman for years, and you bought a ship in Norway. Uh, tell us about it. And it took eight years to put it into seaworthiness. Ollie well, was built in 1920 in Montrose, Scotland, as a herring, Scottish herring drifter. Uh, she spent most of her life doing coastal cargo. During the Second World War, she was uh, taken into the service and was a minesweeper uh, for Great Britain. And I found her in Norway in 1986, took her out of the water, had the hull sonic tested, and bought the boat. 
Did they actually uh, do mine sweeping with sail, or did they no, use the engine? For, it, it was all the engine yeah, for that she, part. Yeah, she was launched with a steam engine. Uh huh. So that's. Yeah. And then, uh, and what did you say in the eight, in the fifties? Uh, this diesel was put in there. The, the, this engine was put in 1954. Uh huh. Oh boy, look at this baby. This one really is going to start you going, huh? This is the wind machine. Yes. There's no wind, huh? That's the big motor. And the big mama. Yes, that we're using, uh, technically we only use it for when we're going in and out the airport because it's just easier yeah. to avoid all the boat and just, all right. yeah, it's already hard to move this big halvai, so it's yeah. good to have a bit of control. And here we have the generator, so yeah. we can have electricity on board during the passage. Uh, we run that every night, so we are able to uh, recharge our computer, iPod, oh, camera. Oh yeah, that's another little diesel, a little Yes. Engine. And, and what are these tanks? Air tanks, that's for starting, right? Evan told me. Evan will know. Yeah. So <laughs> it starts up by compressed air. Mm. Uh, and so then there, one of these things is an air compressor down here. All right. All right. Okay. So up this way... Cargo was done just with a steam engine and then the sails were optional or were they using the sails too? Well, you think? I have a photo of her, I think two years after she was launched and she didn't have a sailing rig in her. Ah. She had a cargo rig and had the big stack with the steam engine. So these masts were totally all added? Oh yes, the whole thing. The only thing that's the same boat that I bought is most of the hull and the engine. Uh -huh. All the rest of it's new. So then parts of the hull you said you had to change too because you put a, a collision bulkhead in, right? No, the collision bulkhead was in, but the, we changed the in, entire accommodation. Rebuilt the deck and all the accommodation below the deck. Uh, what's it called? The, the saloon. Saloon. Yes, saloon. and some berth saloon. there. And there's a berth, huh? Yeah, it's four bed there. And there's two cabins on the side. Oh, yeah? So that's the commune room with all the books. Uh, and the the old, library's over here, huh? Yes. So we have the water tanks and the gas tank, the, petro, uh, the petrol tank, and all the storage for the food, the tools are here. Uh -huh. Toilet paper, everything, rope, name it, know. we what should you have it. toilet paper for? Just use salt water. <laughs> 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 no, right. there, there's some part of, you know, Community that we like to keep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the front berth, huh? Yes. All the, we've things. got four cabins here. Oh yeah, four cabins. Yes. You can have a look. Oh yeah. Is this one of your cabins? Yeah, Where's my your cabin place? is here. Oh, show me your place. Then. Yeah, it's a bit messy. I just arrived like three hours ago. Oh yeah. So start to unpack. And you already pressed into service here. Yeah, so that's. Oh, top bunk is the best yeah. or the worst? Um. I don't know. Last year I was in one of the uh, saloon cabin and I had the bottom one. Yeah. So I will see this here with the top one. I'm from Canada, French Canada, Quebec, uh, Quebec Quebec City. Quebec. Yes. <laughs> and I'm also the ship doctor, the medic on board. I'm, oh. I'm technically a nurse, oh, but yeah. with this kind of uh, traditional sailing back then they had ship doctor. Yeah. So that's my job last year. It's a year. good cabin. Look at this. It's a here. really good cabin. Is this the best one? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I was well, really. Medi ca medic cabin's got to be uh, yeah. pretty good, right? Yes. Well, this is way better than those uh, berths, the little ones up there. That's in the uh, first arrive, first serve. First to pay and get the choice. Oh, yeah? So we have here the medic okay, first furniture, aid. first aid, yes. and there's a lot of stuff. Um, in the captain's cabin, oh, yeah. so we've got everything. We can do suture if you have broken arm, everything, medication for any kind of disease, because they're calling an helicopter for evacuation. It's about ten thousand dollar, so yeah, yeah. you try to not call you for. Fix them up first, huh? And then when you go up here, right. you're back at the windlass. Oh yeah. It wasn't that you had to figure out all the rigging, right? Yeah. She wasn't sailing. She was a motor vessel. Oh. And she had a, a tripod mast with a low-pressure hydraulic rig. And she was uh, dredging sand out of the fjords in Norway and taking it to various cities and selling it to, for construction uh, material. Uh-huh. And she'd been out of uh, survey for about a year and a half. 
uh, before I bought her. So a tripod mast just means you use the mast for a, a crane or for lifting cargo or something. Yeah, yeah. Right. So anyhow, what an amazing. So now you're 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 birth permanently in uh, Nelson. Well, our summer refit area is here in Nelson. In the mm -hmm. wintertime, we go up to the islands, usually running anywhere between uh, Tahiti and New Guinea. We're more or less six months in the islands and six months down here, uh -huh. uh, more or less. And uh, at the end of the season, I'll do a wrap-up newsletter, and we count all the days underway and how many days at anchor, and we're rarely tied up unless we're hauling out of the water. And as I recall, last time we were slightly over 100 days at sea and about 120 days on the anchor. I've been doing medical aid work in Vanuatu for the last six years, so that's always anywhere from four to 12 weeks of the season. Right. And we have a new project in Fiji this year, so we're only going to Fiji and Vanuatu this time. Uh -huh. So then it uh, looks like the crew could be as much as 16 or? Well, we are 16. Yeah. yeah, that's max. Huh? Mm. And then people can just come on, right? I mean, they they contact you through your website and through your email, and then they'll just say, "I want to, I want to sign on for a month," and then you just work it out. That's pretty much program, yeah. Yeah, and it's quite economical at this point, right? Well, I mean, for they got people coming on. I mean, compared to other yeah. schooners. Yeah, I mean, our our big cash flow area is is getting started. We usually come near to filling the boat. Uh, everybody pays for the first four weeks of the passage, and then. Uh, after that, we gain and lose people in every port. And I think last year we averaged about nine on the crew. Uh-huh. As little as four and as many as 12. So with you, usually a watch is four, so then it's pretty hard to do, to go very far with four, right? Or no. It's stressful for people or what? Well, <clears throat> we brought the boat down from Vanuatu two years ago with four people. So two people to a watch and you stand four on, four off. I see. You get used to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyhow, it sounds like at first maybe uh, people will be good in the galley, you know, before they... It's amazing to... I climbed up on the mast a little bit, but people kind of get their sea legs and their air legs too, right? Yeah, it takes a little practice. Uh -huh. In port, it's easier to go aloft and then we're at sea. You need to get used to the movement of the ship. Right. And then, of course, when the weather picks up, that's another step in learning how to be able to go aloft. Well, there's a lot more to it because uh, you have to learn how to uh, quickly uh, lash things down and make special knots. And uh, it looks like on the sails, the knots are such that if you just pull that rope, you can unfurl the sail in just a jiffy. Yep. Yeah. So then uh, that's what you're training everybody, right? Yeah, uh, we have set sail setting sessions most every day before we get started. So then when you're out, when you're uh, when you pick up some crew in a port, you don't have that long to do sessions they got a kind of like on the job training right right it's that we'll we'll do one or two so people know the basic commands and what they're supposed to do and they'll of course forget yeah. a large part of it but then like you say on the job training is it pretty good that uh, uh, each person on the crew the experienced crew can take uh, an apprentice under them and just show them one job uh, kind of uh, it's a sort of a thing everyone is assigned to a watch so the new people on the watch learn from the people who know more on each watch yeah so we, we don't assign people, you just follow your watch leader. Right. Um, is navigation something that only a few of you know how to go by the stars or go by the compass? Or? Well, I'm the only one who knows how to go by the stars, but my other two watch leaders have watch standing experience, and we use a GPS for position finding. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so then, uh, you are you in radio contact every day with some with somebody and tell them your position? Or? Yeah, we normally check in with a, a maritime mobile uh, network called Rag of the Air. So every morning at 1900 Zulu, we talk to the people, give them our position, and they give us a specialized weather forecast. Oh yeah, great. So then, uh, is there a special weather radio that's always broadcasting weather, weather, weather uh, for certain latitudes or longitudes? Uh, there's weather services. New Zealand has a MET service, and uh, several times a day they broadcast uh, meteorological charts. Kim was showing me some uh, some footage she shot last year of uh, some light gales. I guess they were light because the heavy gales, she probably didn't have a camera out. <laughs> but anyhow, it's pretty exciting. And uh, that's something that people just, you were saying that people uh, just do what they're comfortable with, and they don't really have to go out and and what they feel is too risky for them. No, I tell everyone if uh, they don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it. 
There's uh -huh. no, no reason or need to push someone beyond their limits. I mean, we all have to work within our limits. In other words, those limits are always moving, like uh, expanding. You know, not only our limits of, uh, of being a seafaring man, but also our limits of living in confinement or close with other people. Probably all, there's both things going on at the same time, right? Well, hopefully life is a learning experience. Right, right. That's why we're here. Yeah, perfect. So, an amazing lifestyle. So, Evan, uh, thanks so much for showing us around the ship, and uh, thanks for m so much for telling us about how we could participate. Okay, cool. Hey, anyway. <laughs>